Hi, and welcome to Social Media School. Ever wonder how professionals get those stunning video shots? Wonder no more. Today we'll explore some of the best professional techniques in advanced videography. When shooting a video, a good, stable tripod is the main ingredient for professional results. Utilizing a tripod not only removes unwanted vibration and camera shake, it also improves composition by forcing the user to frame up the shot before locking down the tripod. That being said, there is a time and place for some camera movement. Today we'll talk about two advanced camera movements, the jib and the dolly. This is the classic jib shot, coming down from a high vantage point to reveal the subject. The vertical camera movement is a good establishing shot. It gives the overall look of a location and viewers a sense of place. The jib shot can also be performed from going low to high, as in this example. Let's switch ends to see what a jib looks like. As you can see, the jib is a type of mechanical camera crane. This one is powered mainly by an operator pushing up or down on a bar loaded with weights that counterbalance the camera out on the front end. While this 25-foot jib is a pretty large example, there are many consumer models with 8 to 11 feet of extension that cost a few hundred dollars. Some of the most effective jib shots only require a few feet of extension. A dolly shot makes it appear one is moving through the environment. A simple dolly system, like this one that rides on PVC pipe rails, can cost just a few hundred dollars. Whether using dollies or jibs, remember that some of the most effective camera movement is slow, steady, and subtle. Concentrate on the smoothness of the move, not the speed of it. Lastly, if you're going to utilize camera movement, make sure you have a reason for doing so. There are many cameras that are designed to be attached to vehicles, boats, or even the operator. These point of view, or POV cameras, are increasingly affordable and offer opportunities for unique vantage points. Joining us to talk about POV cameras is service videographer Ryan Haggerty. Thanks, Kate. As you can see, these POV cameras can be small and they have a lot of cool housings and accessories. In fact, it's pretty easy to spend two to three times the camera's price on your accessories. This one, the GoPro Hero, has underwater housings, suction cup mounts for placing it on a kayak or any place you'd like to get an interesting view. A handy property of zoom lenses is that they allow you to stack an image. A good example of this can be seen from our parking lot fight example. Let's say you want funding to enlarge an existing parking lot. Here we have two irate drivers arguing about a fender bender in that crowded parking area. Did you seriously just back into my car? What are you talking about? What if you shoot this scene from a few feet away by using your zoom lens to zoom out, the zoom lens disperses the image, making it not look too crowded. However, by going far away and zooming in, you can stack this image to make things look very crowded, showing clearly that you need more parking space. This technique allows you to stack all sorts of images. Zoom lenses are often used in wildlife photography. Let's go on location with our video team to see firsthand.
about 40 degrees outside, but it's nice and toasty in here. And that's just one of the important points about working out of a blind when you're getting wildlife footage. It keeps you comfortable. It keeps the wind off of you and off your equipment. Now you may not think that wind's that big of a problem, but when you have a big long wildlife lens like this and you're zoomed all the way in, just a tiny bit of wind can ruin your shot. Even more important, if it starts to rain, that can not only ruin your shot, that can ruin your day, ruin your equipment. Having a blind like this keeps the weather off of your gear. You can get a lot of gear in a blind. You can have your video gear, you can have still camera gear, you can have your lunch and a thermos. Uh, I keep a five gallon bucket in here to sit on. So you keep a lot of stuff in here and it keeps it shielded from the keen eyes of your wildlife subjects that are out there. So that when you're in here changing tapes, changing batteries, or you're moving the camera around to get a shot, they can't see you when you've got all the flaps closed on your blind except the one you're shooting out of, it becomes a black hole and the wildlife can't see you. Just another great reason to work out of blinds for your wildlife footage. Now back to work. Just remember, while blinds are a plus for video, they may cause audio problems, especially on breezy days. The sound of your blind flapping in the wind may obscure the audio of wildlife you want to get. In that case, it's best to use an external mic with a good windscreen and set it a distance away from your blind. If you follow these guidelines, you should end up with a video that makes you happy. That's it for this installment of Social Media School. Make sure to check out our other tutorials. Thanks for watching.